Hi everyone, I am in my sewing space in Puerto Rico and we are going to make this quilt. It is called Dash. It comes from the Fabric Cafe book, Easy Peasy Three Yard Quilts. I cut out my pieces before I went on vacation and I put the pattern inside with it. So yesterday I did a live, so if you didn't catch that, go for it because I give you a little tour of all the fruit trees that are on the property, as well as making the quilt and chatting along. So yesterday I had created what they, what the um, directions are calling for is, hold on, with unit A. So right here is unit A. I am using a yard of this black background, and then I'm using scraps for all my little dash parts. And they are all a black and white prints that I pulled out of my stash. I have like a stash cart of all different size squares. And so I went ahead, and instead of using strips, I went ahead into my um, strip cart, I mean my strip cart, my um, square cart, I call it, I don't know, I call it my scrap system. One day I'll show it to you. And I pulled out the number that I needed. And some of them are the same and some of them are different, but that's what I had decided to use is my scraps. So I have my blocks, these are all set. Then the focal fabric, right? Cause that would t technically be fabric two. Well, fabric two, Yes, so then my focal fabric. This is what I had decided to use for my focal fabric, which are my crumbs. And I went ahead and trimmed these down to the size block that is needed in the pattern. And what this would be is you would find, um, right here, you would find it in fabric one on the directions and on fabric three. So fabric one and fabric three has you cut out these squares in two different fabrics, but I'm just going to make them all using crumbs. So when you are trying to do this scrappy yourself, go to fabric one cutting instructions and fabric three cutting instructions, and it'll tell you what size you need to cut down your crumbs. So these are your crumb, my crumbs. Some of them are strips and some are, this used to be actually an old block from a quilt that I made. So I even stuck some orphan block that I had. So it really could be anything that you have that is this size block. Orphan, crumb, strip, whatever it is you like. So now the next step. So this would could be considered your um, but block A and C. So the, the call this block A and C. So now all we need is the this stack of crumbs, this unit A block, and we are going to make three of these row assemblies. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of my unit A's, and I don't have a design wall here, so I am just gonna randomly pull this, which is gonna drive me crazy because I'm sure I'm gonna have things where I don't want them to be. But guess what? This is going to be in true scrap fashion because I don't have a place to lay this out. And it is, I don't even have a place out here to lay it out. So we are just gonna wing it and we're just gonna go for it. And what happens, happens. So I'm coming in here using my quarter inch strip um, while I'm vacation, I am using, it's called the white, um, white sewing machine. It is, I don't know what the model is. It's the one that I Grammy has. I, I had got, gotten it as a gift and gave it to my Grammy to use here. And then when I'm here, I use it. So we are going to go in and go a quarter inch. Um, since the last time of me using this, I had... A, oops, there it is. It's a little noisy. Yes, I oiled it and everything. <laughs> Just in case if you're wondering. So we are going to do um, one 
and two. We'll just pick another one. And you know what? That one was stripes. So let's go for something that's a little less stripey. Maybe something like this. Yeah, let's do this. And let's see, those stripes are going horizontal. We'll go vertical. All right. And I'm going to again put another one here. But anyway, so the last time I remember there was this lip that kept bothering my seams. And last time I just put some literally just like a piece of plastic there and cushioned it to kind of get things to slide. But you know what, being that I know that I had that issue, I went ahead and bought one of these um, from Lori Holt, these, what is it called? It's called Seam So Easy, and that works fabulous on here. So I am very delighted. So this other one, we're gonna put this one horizontal as well, and this one has to come here. All right, I'm just following the, the Fabric Cafe patterns are wonderful you can follow the the diagram. They, they give you diagrams for everything. So I am just actually sitting here looking over here at the diagram just to make sure that I'm doing this right. So now we're gonna come and I'm gonna come in here and take these two apart and I'm making one of the first rows. So I need an A and a block. Well, it says, um, these, they're calling these, this block B unit. Oh, but it says unit A, block B assembly. Okay, so I guess unit A is this part here. And once you put the side pieces, the whole thing, I'm sorry if I'm making, is block B. So I have a block B, and then a block A, then another block B, and they're calling this a block C. We're just gonna go with it. I'm just trying to show you and use their wordage on their fabric so you can see how you can alter it to use your crumbs and your scraps. Put those in there. All right, so now I'm going to take this completely out. Can't chain anymore. So I have. Boy, am I spoiled for having my other machine that has everything on it. Okay, so we have a block B, a block A, a block B, a block C, a block B. And, oops, let me see, did I do something wrong here? I might have done something wrong here, let's see. This goes like this. Oh, that's right, because I didn't wasn't going to worry about how things fall. Well, you know what? That is going to bother me. I said I wasn't going to do it, but it's going to bother me. So I'm going to go ahead and take another one of these, and I'm just going to, let's see. That goes this way. All right. I'm going to just whip up another one of these. I'll use that on the next row. Um, sometimes I say I'm going to do things and not worry about it, but there's just something in me that even though if I don't have a design wall and I see something is, oh, this, you know what, this, this sewing machine needs needles and enders. Okay, so today my... one of my things is to get something together for a leader and ender because 
this machine while I'm using it. Okay, now we're doing something good. Now we're cooking here how I want it. <clears throat> so now we're going to add this to the row. <clears throat> Excuse me. So normally I don't have allergies when I'm in Puerto Rico and I'm so always excited and ecstatic because I always have time where I'm allergy free and this time around since I've never been here in April I have allergies and when I started speaking to everyone and my friends and saying it's so weird they all informed me this is allergy time for Puerto Rico so it was good to know and thank goodness I brought all my allergy medicine with me because you know I travel with it just in case all right so here we go we have the first row. As you can see, that's our first row. And see how I had the horizontal and the two verticals? So I went with that because that was gonna give me two horizontals in the center and I didn't want that. So this is row one and I'm gonna place this down. Now I'm going to work on row two. So now if that goes that way, here we go. We could probably use right this. So we're gonna use this one that I didn't wanna use before because that's gonna go horizontal. And then I need another one, and that's going to go vertical-ish. Yes. So I'm going to grab another one of these, and I'm going to put it on this side. And so there I went vertical, horizontal, vertical, and here I'm going horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And for me, because it, I mean, they're mostly strip blocks. There's a couple that's not. I'm just gonna go with it. So. And then the next one is another one of these, but we're gonna put them horizontal-ish. You see how some of them, not completely strips, but. And then we're gonna put a last one of these. And because these are crumbs, you get these strange things here. I'm just going to here. I'm just going to cut it right off so I don't have that extra bulk in here. And here we go. I'm gonna go here definitely have decided that I need to use starch while I'm here and I have to go out and buy some at the store when I'm here because the humidity I don't know makes this fabric so soft <laughs> and so pliable and I like it a little less pliable let's see okay so we've got that we're coming in and Right, I'm going to set this down. And next. And I'm just gonna show you two rows so that this video doesn't get terribly long. And maybe join those two rows together so you kind of get the gist of what's going on here. It's a good way to use your scraps and your crumbs in an actual pattern. So here's my next one, horizontal, um, vertical, horizontal, and vertical-ish. And we're gonna take our other row, and we're going to put that on top of this. Oh no, we're not. We have to put a sashing in between. And I have them, they're right here, see? So we have to put a sashing. So this is row one, and let's go ahead and put a sashing on that. So I'm just gonna grab my sashing here. 
and hopefully it's long enough. I, I actually don't even know. Maybe I have to join a couple of these. Nope, perfect. All right, so I have my sashing and I am going to put it at the bottom of this row. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go for it. yesterday in my live I had was sewing on a different table and that table was bouncing around so I'm sewing now on a tinier table and I have more stability. And we have the sashing piece. Now, from there, I'm on the wild side. I'm not, well, yeah, you know what? I can go around and you can still see me because my, my, um, no, I don't need to do that. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> I'll press it after. I can't believe I'm saying that. So, you know what? I can't do it, folks. I have to press it. <laughs> do it. All right. So I'll meet you over here. I think you can see me. Yep, you can see me. I have my, um, let's turn it on. I think it goes on. Let's see. This has a little switch here, so I'm not quite sure how the switch is supposed to be, but we will see. I love this iron. I use it only when I'm here. I bought one, oh, there it goes. I bought one for the house and brought it, brought it home with me, but it doesn't give me the same, the same, I don't know, results. And, um, the voltage is the same. Someone asked me if the voltage is different and the voltage is not. Um, not that I know of that it's different. I mean, I plug everything in that I bring from the States. Okay, so I'm setting my seam and I'm gonna go ahead and press the sashing. Now, I know I said that um, I don't have starch and so I don't have traditional starch I did bring my best press so let me give it a little bit of a maybe it'll be a little better but the best press as much as I love it I don't know it has like a different I, I get a different feel and everything it's not as stiffer as if it was home so here I've done that And what I need to do, coming back, is I need to cut off that piece of sashing and square that off, which I'm going to do right now. And yes, I'm off camera, but it wasn't worth, so here we go. So we have our first sashi, sashed top. So our first row, a sashing, and now we're going to have our second row. And we are gonna go ahead and put the second row on here. 
And in this case, and I double check that I'm doing this right. Yes, so in this case, I am gonna go ahead and pin the beginning and then come down, right? And the end. So we don't have any wonkiness happening. And now I'm gonna shut off the iron. There is like a thousand mosquitoes by the iron. I don't know why they are by the iron like that, but as long as they're away from me, I don't care. So I come in here and throw a couple of pins to keep everything feeding evenly. Because those feed dogs are amazing. They will just feed in that, ease in that extra fabric if you happen to have some. And like I said, because everything seems so much, I can't explain it, it's just softer and wrinklier. All right, so now I'm gonna take my two rows, put it together, and I'm going to, oh, and then I have threads, any loose threads, just cut them off. I'm gonna feed this right through the machine. Again, quarter inch, everything's a quarter inch. And, And I, again, I have some stuff pinned, but I do, do want to make sure that my bottom and top are even. And I hope you can see. I don't know if you can see what's going on here. I'm, sure. I'm trying my best with videoing while I'm away. And I'm going to grab my needle. Uh oh. Got a little bit of mosquitoes. And as you can see here, things are shifting, so you want to continue and make sure things are not shifting and then we are almost done with row one and two here comes wild chickens breeding me this morning they were my alarm clock. So here we go. We have row one and two together. And so you just continue on with the directions and it has one, two, three, four, five, six rows in here. So that's all. That's how we're going to make this scrappy <laughs> block. What's up with you? Are you upset that I'm, not, I'm on taping? Did you hear that chicken? Anyway, everyone have a fabulous day. Take care of yourself. Pass it forward. And if you like what you see, please subscribe, like, share my channel. And at 1,500 um, subscribers, I will be doing another Pass It Forward. Have a fabulous day. And don't forget to try this dash by Fabric Cafe in the book Easy Peasy. Take care. Bye.